Tzach is getting daf mem tes is the first full daf in Parakan Zakim discussing how you repay the damages that someone owes to someone else and other types of monetary obligations. We are far away from the halachos of Gitin here. The Gemara is getting deep into the between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shmuel as to what level of land quality one needs to pay if he owes for the damages that he caused or that was caused by his property to someone else. And as we have said, there are three levels of land quality. We're not talking about a difference in valuation, just quality and therefore also quantity. More quality means less quantity gets the same valuation. But the three levels of quality are it is highest level, Benonis middle level, and Ziburis lowest level. We're going to use those terms. And we had said that the halacha is that if you cause damage to someone, you have to pay him from idis. You have to pay him highest quality. Now the Gemara is discussing whose highest quality, the highest quality of the one who's paying, the damager, that's who we call the mazik, or the highest quality of the one who's being paid because he suffered the damage, that's who we call the nizik. Now this is Mokhalkis Rabbi Shemal and Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Shemal says we use the valuation goes by the highest land quality that the nizik owns, not the one who's paying it, the one who's the nizik. So if his highest land quality is like the lowest land quality of the mazik, the mazik could just pay from his lowest land quality, from his zibur's. And Rabbi Akiva disagrees and says, no, it's just in the halacha of the mazik. You look at the mazik's land, you ignore everything else. He's the one who's paying. He has to take his highest level as high as third of land quality and use that to pay. Now, there's again no discussion of valuation or how much he owes. We're talking about you evaluate, let's say it was land that was destroyed by fire. So you look at the land that was destroyed, you evaluate what was destroyed, how much is it worth, you set a fixed monetary amount, and now you have to go see which land you're going to use to pay. So the Gemara wants now to show what is the source of these two And so the Gemara first brings Rabbi Shemal's opinion. So Rabbi Shemal has Xerashav from the word Sada which is used twice in a Pasuk describing the payment of the Mazik to the Nizik for the damage he caused this field. So it says, Ki ish sodeh aikerem. So first it refers to the word Sadeh clearly refers to the property of the Nizik. It's referring to the field that was destroyed. And then later it says, Metav sadeyu umetav karma yishalim. That he has to pay from the best of the fields, from the best of his field. So the word Sada here is linked to the word Sada above, just like the word Sada above was referring to the field of the Nizik, the word Sada here is referring to the field of the Nizik, and the Mazik who's paying has to pay from the land quality, which is the highest of that which belongs to the Nizik. And therefore, when it says, Metav Zadeh, pay your highest land quality, it's referring to the land quality of the Nizik. Now, therefore, Rabbi Shmuel is a source that you have to pay, doesn't matter if it could, it could be the cheapest land that belongs to the mazik who's paying, but it's got to be equal. If it is equal to the highest land quality, the idis of the nizik, then that's what you pay. Now, Rabbi Yish, that's Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Kiva disagrees. Rabbi Kiva says, simply, if you look at the word sode, it says, metav sodehu, the best of his land, referring to him. Him is the guy who's paying. And if it has to be the best of his land, it's the best land of the mazik, irrelevant of what the nizik has. Now, what does Rabbi Shmuel do with that? So Rabbi Shmuel says, no, you need both halachas. That's referring to in a situation where the mazik has two types of land. He has high quality and he has low quality. And his low quality is lower than the idis, than the high quality of the nizik. So, and his high quality is higher. So there, he's going to come to the nizik and he's going to say, well, I get to pay you by your highest land quality. I don't have that, so I'm going to give you one level lower. On that we say, no, sadehu, here you have to go up the ladder, you don't go down the ladder. If you can't match the highest land quality of the nizik, you got to go higher. You can't go lower. So but both of the are needed. We go by, the valuation goes by the nizik, just like we said from sada sada, the Zereshava. But this sadehu is to teach me if you can't match it exactly, you go up, not down. Okay. Now... Rabbi Kiva phrases it as follows. He says, the Torah is only coming to teach me to be strict on the one who's paying, to be strict on the mazik, that he has to pay high quality. And therefore, we're not looking to be lenient. We're saying he has to pay high quality. We're saying he has to pay from his own highest quality. Now, the Gemara goes into Sugi B here, which is Rabbi Kiva continues, and he says, hektish. And certainly the same thing applies to hektish. Remember what says, what do you mean? What, what about hektish? What are you talking about? What applies to hektish? So the Gemara understands it means that Hektish has to pay or be paid from highest quality, from Idis as well. So the says, what are we referring to? So the first uh, attempt to explain this is referring to where we 
caused damages to hectish property. That is, a an individual, a regular person's ox, destroyed or attacked or gored hectish property. Let's say it gored hectish's ox. So now you need to pay hectish. So therefore, you have to pay from the highest quality of land that you have, if that's what you're using to pay. So whereas this can't be the pshad, because if someone, if a regular individual's ox gores hectares, ox, he doesn't pay at all. The Torah says, It's only if you gore your friend's ox, that is another private person. If you gore a hectish ox, that's excluded from the Pasuk about the damages for goring altogether. And therefore, there's no payment at all to hectish. So the Gemara says, so, okay, so we'll discuss a different shot. We're not talking about damages at all. When he says, Hektish is talking about if somebody just promises, he makes a vow, says, I'm going to give money to Hektish for the upkeep of the base of Migdash, for the the Bedek Habayas, whatever it is that he's referring to. So he owes the money, and Hektish's caretaker can come and collect from his this, from his highest level of land. So where it says that, we have a problem with as well. Because when somebody creates a vow to Hektish, he says, I'm going to give money to Hektish. All he became is somebody who owes money. That's what we call a bachayv, somebody who owes money, not as restoration for anything. There, the halacha is that he pays from the middle level, not from the highest level. So what does Rabbi Kiva mean? Kabbalah Chomer has to pay from the highest level. Now, maybe you'll tell me, no, Rabbi Kiva disagrees with that halacha. You just said Rabbi Kiva holds a bachayv, always pays from the highest level, just like Nezikin. So then, you can now, you could ask this kasha differently. If Rabbi Kiva holds that a nizik, that a mazik, and a balchayv pay from idis, and he wants to say the same thing applies to somebody who's paying hektish, how could you learn that from the private person who's paying to somebody who's paying to hektish? How could you learn from somebody who's paying another individual to somebody who's paying hektish? Paying another individual is a much more chomer halacha, because you see you even pay for the damages. Paying hektish, you don't pay for damages. So it's weaker. So how could you say that he necessarily has to pay? Kavachomer, he has to pay from this as well. Maybe not. Maybe he pays lower quality land, just like he doesn't get for damages at all. Hectish. So the Gemara therefore goes back to its first plot with an adjustment. The Gemara says, no, we're referring to where our individual ox gored Hectish's ox. And we keep holds like the opinion of Hashem ben Manasseh. Who's that? So we're closer by. So Hashem ben Manasseh says, Actually, the halacha is that if a private person's ox gores hectish ox, he does have to pay. Not only that, he has to pay stricter. When the Torah said, ki yigach, ki yigach shir ish, shir eyu, it's only referring to the following halachas apply when a private person's ox gores a private person's ox. However, if a regular person's ox gores a hectish ox, not that you don't have to pay, you have to pay worse. How does that work? So, Manasseh holds Hectish always has the upper hand. If Hectish's ox gores your ox, it doesn't have to pay. If your ox gores Hectish's ox, so now you have to pay full damages, even if it's the first time that it attacked. Usually, the first three times, you only have to pay half damage, which we call Chatzin Nezek. But if you attacked Hectish, then you have to pay Nezek Shola. Says the Gemara, once you say this, now we have a big problem in our whole understanding of the Machlekes of Yishmael and Rabbi Kiva. We had said, the only words we have in the Machlokas of Yishmael, Rabbi Kiva, that we've said so far, is Rabbi Shmuel says you evaluate by the Idis of the Nizik, and Rabbi Kiva says you evaluate by the Idis of the Mazik. And we, we were learning, we're talking about a case where the Idis of the Nizik is equal to the Ziburis of the Mazik, and the question is, can he get away with paying just that? Now, once we're saying the Yosek Hashem of Menasia, that you always have to pay more to Hektish, maybe the whole Machlokas is about this, it's about Hektish. And Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva are not arguing about it is to, everybody agrees you pay the idis of the nizik. The question is, how much, how, do you have to pay more to Hektish or not? Do you have to pay a higher level to Hektish? Is there a special halacha of Hektish that you have to pay the idis of the mazik, if it's worth more than the idis of the nizik, to Hektish? Rabbi Shmuel doesn't hold of a higher payment to Hektish. He doesn't hold of Shem and Manasya. And Rabbi Kiva holds of a higher payment to Hektish. And that's the whole discussion. It's really focusing on the Kavachomer to Hektish that Rabbi Shmuel had said. So the Mary gives three reasons that this can't be the right shot. The first reason is Rabbi Kiva's words, he said that the, the Pasuk is only coming to tell us a strictness for the Mazik. Obviously, we're talking about a regular Mazik and a regular Nizik. We're not talking about Hektish over here. He's analyzing the Psukim describing a regular Hektish. The second problem is, what does he mean when he says Kavchomer to Hektish? 
Hektish has to mean we saw a way where we're not a hectish, where it's strict, and if it's hectish, then it's a kavachomer. You're telling me the only machlokas here is about hectish, kavachomer, hectish doesn't make any sense. And the third problem is that there's a brisa that explicitly spells it out. Rashi quotes a brisa. A brisa says that the it says meitav sedeu meitav kram yishalim. What does meitav sedeu mean? So according to Rabbi Shmuel, meitav sedeu of the nizik and meitav kram of the nizik. And Rabbi Shmuel, meitav sedeu of the mazik and meitav kram of the mazik. So clearly, is a machlokas there as well. This concludes the Gemara's discussion about the Melchagas of Bishmol Rabbi Kiva, but now the Gemara is going to go back to our Mishnah and say another Pshat and Akasha we had there, which is what had gotten us into this discussion in the first place. The Mishnah said that a Mazik pays a Nizik, he pays for the damages that he caused, he pays from it, he pays from the highest level. And the Mishnah says that's my Tikan Ayam to fix the world, which implies that it's a Darabonan, something Darabonan said because they saw a problem. The first question was that it's not, it's a Lacha Daraisa. So the first answer we saw was a Baye that we saw on the Daf yesterday. That was that we're, we're saying that the halacha that Rabbi Yishmol holds, that Midaraisa you pay only from the idis of the nizik, and the tikkun ha'elim that you have to pay from the idis of the mazik if it's worth more. Now the Gemara wants to say it's not Rabbi Yishmol, it's really Rabbi Akiva. I have to Rabbi Akiva, what does tikkun ha'elim mean? So Gemara says this Mishnah holds like Rabbi Shimon in a whole different issue, and that is can we say the reasons that the Torah said certain halachos? Do we do something called do we give explanations and reasons what the Pasuk's reasoning is for its halachos? Or do we say, no, the Torah tells us what halach is, and it's not a business to figure out why. So Rosh Hashem yes, we do say what the reason is. And that's what this Mishnah means, we play Tikkun Ha'ilam. This is not a Tikkun Ha'ilam of the Rabbanon. This is a Tikkun Ha'ilam of the Torah. The Pasuk told us something in order to fix the world, Tikkun Ha'ilam. And that's quotes a Brisa, which explains how Rosh Hashem understands all three types of payments that are listed, Nizik. Baal Chayv and Ksuba, why they are from Idis, Bainanis, and Ziburis, respectively. So Baisa says as follows, says Reb Shemin, why is it that a Nizik has to pay from Idis? It's because there are thieves out there, and because there are people who grab and force others to sell them things, they grab the stuff and they throw the money at them. Why? Because what is the person going to help? You'll, you'll have a situation where somebody wants to steal someone else's land. The problem is, is that if he knows that when the Chacham will come and collect for the Nizik, they're going to take away his best land anyway, he's going to lose the land. So what's the point in him stealing from, in him stealing the best land? He's going to lose it, it'll be taken away from him anyway. That's why it has to be from the Nizik. Otherwise he could steal, and he could take the good land, and then he could repay if he gets caught with something else. And therefore you have to pay from the good land. That's for the Mazik, that's for the thief, that's for the Chomos, all these types of ways of of uh, taking away or destroying someone else's things. And that's why the Pasuk said you pay from your best land. And that's the Tikkun Ha'ilam. That's what is meant over here. Now, next, the Bryce continues and says, what about the Bachayv? Somebody who uh, is owed money because he lent. Why does he collect only from the Bainanis? So here the Gemara says, because you could have a situation where somebody sees someone else's land, and he's, he desires that land, he wants to get that land away from him, so he says, here's what I'll do, I'm going to lend that person money, when he doesn't have what to pay, I'm going to collect his land, and I'll collect that great, wonderful piece of land that I have my eye on. So in order to prevent that from happening, they said, no, you can't take the person's best land, you can only take the Bainanis, you can only take the middle level land. So says, maybe he's going to try to take away the middle level land, maybe he has his eye on that, maybe he should only be able to collect from the Ziburus, from the lowest level of land. Versus if that would be the halacha, that somebody who lends money can only collect from the worst quality of land, people won't lend money because they know they're going to get stuck collecting bad land. So we couldn't go that far. And therefore he has to be able to collect at least from decent land, at least from the middle level land. Now why does a woman collect a ksuba from the zibus, from the lowest level of land? So Marfa says that's actually a machlekes. Rabbi Yehuda says that she collects from the lowest level land, and Rabbi Meir says she actually takes the bainanist, the middle level land. He says, Rabbi Shimon, why is it from the lowest level? He's holding like Rabbi Yehuda. So he says, because the woman is her hand in these negotiations are on the uh, weaker position. When they're discussing the marriage and they're setting out the terms, she's the one who is more desirous of marriage than he is. That's generally how it goes. And therefore, the terms will be set in his favor. And if he says, when we, if we end this marriage and I give you your ksuba, which is promised to her to give her financial security, to give her security in the marriage, I'm only going to give you Zippor's because you're more desperate to make a deal here than I am. 
Now, even the fact that he owes to the Ksuba at all is a Tagon Chazal. The Bryce concludes by saying, another thing is that a woman gets divorced whether she agrees to it or not, meaning she doesn't have to agree, but the man has to give the get, so therefore he can only, it, it only happens if he agrees. So the rest of what does that have to do with anything? How does that explain why she gets a Ksuba Zipuris? What does that have to do with how they end the marriage? What is, he has his upper hand in the divorce process. Great. What does that have to do with the ksuba? So Yomar says, no. What we mean to say is, if you want to say that just like the Rabbanan made a ksuba to protect the woman's rights, they should have also made a ksuba to protect the man's rights so that he should be secure in the marriage. So there was no there was no concern for that because since he has to be the one to give the get, he's secure and he could negotiate for terms that he uh, agrees to. He's not going to get forced into anything. And therefore, they didn't have to make a ksuba to protect him. Okay, the Gemara now goes more deeply into the halacha that a woman collects a ksuba from Ziburis. The Gemara is going to quote a discussion and try to bring a proof from the Bryce that we just brought. So the Gemara says, Rav Zutra, son of Rabbi Nachman, said, this that we said that a ksuba is from Ziburis is only if she's collecting from the orphans, from the inheritors. That is, her husband had died, and she's collecting from his Yisayimim. However, if she's collecting from her husband himself, she got divorced, and she's collecting from him, then she takes the Bainanis. So you want to ask, hold on a second, if that's what we're referring to, that she's collecting from the Yisayimim, what does that have to do with a special Ach of Ksuba? Everybody collects from Yisayimim, only from Zibur. So the mission that says that anything that you're collecting from a person's inheritors, you only take from lowest quality from Ziburis. So... Obviously, we're referring to you collecting from him, and that's why there's a special halacha that only Iksubas Isha is from Ziburs. So Umar says, no, really we're talking about from him. And you may have thought that Iksubas Isha has a special level that she was given. The Chazal wanted to give Chain, they wanted marriage to look good to her. They were afraid women weren't going to want to get married, and therefore they raised it up from Ziburs, teaching us, no, Iksubas Isha is uh, from Ziburs. It was not bumped higher. Even though we're talking about collecting from Yisayimim, you may think that they, they raised it up to be a higher level that she could collect, not only from Ziburis, unlike everybody else collects from Ziburis Kamashima, and that's not true. But really, we're talking about Yisayimim. So it says, Rav, let's bring a proof from our Mishnah as to whether, when we say that a woman collects from Ziburis, are we are we referring to from him or from Yisayimim? And is it true that if she was collecting from him himself, from her husband himself, she, she would collect from a higher level than Zibor. So in the Mishnah, we had a list of, all in the Brisa, that is, that we just read, we had the list of all the reasons why a, a Mazik has to pay Idis, and a Bachayv has to pay Beninist, and Exubas Isha has to pay Ziburus. And there we had that Rameir said that Exubas Isha pays Beninist. Now, what are you talking about? If you're talking about from the Yisaymim, so Rabbi, Rabbi Meir holds, you can only collect from your Yisayimim from Ziburis. We just said that. So Rabbi Meir is listed in the Mishnah, and he literally says you can only collect from Ziburis. So obviously, we're not talking about collecting from Yisayimim. So the Gemara says, um, no. Again, really, we're talking about from Yisayimim, but the Ksubas Isha is on a higher level because of Chain, and therefore, the uh, halacha of Rabbi Meir is that you do lift up the Ksubas Isha and she does collect from Veninus. And the Rabbanan disagree. They say you collect from Ziburis. They are also referring to from the Yisayimim and they say you don't lift it up to and there is no Cheshben of Chen. Now, the Gemara brings another proof, very similar to Brisa. Brisa says that Nazi can get paid from Idis, Bachay from Veninus, Ksubas Isha from Ziburis. Obviously, if referring to Ksubasisha from Ziburis and everything else is from higher things, we're not talking about Yisayimim, because then they would all get Ziburis. So we're talking about from the husband himself, and it clearly says that Ksubasisha gets Ziburis, not Veinayinus. So here the Gemara gives a different answer. So the Gemara says, Rebach, Rebach, says, no, and here we're not talking about Yisayimim, we're not talking about the Baal, we're talking about the Arev. That is, that somebody became an Arev for his own son. And he has to, he agreed to guarantee the son's obligations of Nazikin loans and Ksuba. And then he he took on to pay that, and then the son died. So now what happens? So for the Nazikin and for the Balchayev, you pay like the regular halacha, because Nazikin and Balchayev is something that you could collect even while the son's alive. However, Ksuba is something you only collect after the death of the son, and therefore, he has the halacha of Ziburis, just like an inheritor where you're coming to collect from Yisamim. So 
So the Mar asks, so what is a different problem? There is no Shiba on an Ari for Ksuba. A guarantor does not a, a guarantor doesn't have to pay for a ksuba. The Mar says we're talking about an Arif Kablon. It's a specific type of guarantee where he obligates himself, that is, there was a property given over in advance that the person is collecting actually is holding the property, and he has to he gives them back to hold for a while. But without getting into the lachos of Arif Kablon, in that situation you do have to pay for a ksuba. So the Gemara says that's only good according to the one who says that a Kablon uh, obligates himself to pay even though the borrower has no property of his own. However, there is an opinion that a Kablon does not obligate himself to pay, does not fully accept upon himself the obligation if the borrower doesn't have any property because he knows that the borrower is not going to be able to pay. So he doesn't actually agree to pay even if he says so. So says the Gemara, so according to that opinion, what would you do here? There is no property here, obviously, because if there was property, then she would be collecting from that property, the property of the son. Why is he collecting from the father? So Mike gives two answers. Either he had property, the son had property at the time that the Kabbalanist, the Ari of Kabbalan was made, and then he lost it, like it got flooded. Or because it's a father and a son, the father is Meshavid himself. He does agree to take responsibility for the son's obligations, even though the son has no property.